iPhone 12, iPhone 12 Pro, iPhone 12 Pro Max, iPhone 12 Mini, HomePod Mini. There is a lot to talk about the October Apple event, and we are talking about it with my friend here. Um, I'll link his podcast in the show notes. His name is Sarvesh JM. Say hello. Hello. So let's start with um, iPhone 12 mini, arguably the star of the show. Um, I agree. In the past, over like the past two years, the best selling models have been like the cheap ones, the 10R, the 11. Of course. I mean, when you want a top end iPhone, you prob- when you want a cheap yeah. iPhone, you want to go for the lower versions. But I think now that they have made the iphone 12 cheaper in the us like most people tend to go for the pro models because they can afford them Uh, yeah i mean when the iphone 10 came with like it's thousand dollars everyone was making fun of it but now thousand dollars it's it's all right for for apple these days yeah to be a thousand dollars consider that uh, iPhones are normally priced much higher abroad. You can see the appeal of a slight uh, budget iPhone with the specs you really need, like the battery and um, I guess the processor. And uh, you, of course, have Face ID that bezel is designed and all that. But like you don't get like all the pro features like the pro camera system and all that but it's good value for money i mean if you look at the um, iphone 12 mini it starts at 699 dollars in the us it has some 5g which they couldn't stop talking about in the event a 5.4 inch super retina xdr display an ultra wide and regular camera with two times optical zoom uh, a14 bionic um according to them about up to 15 hours of video playback and uh, face id it has their brand new ceramic shield tough glass and uh, water resistance and of course there's the new mag safe uh, the charger the case the wallet and all that that's for 699 and then if you look at the uh, pro or let's go the the pro is Starting at $999. Pro Max starts at $1099. Let's just look at the specs of the regular Pro. 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR display, 5G, three cameras, the ultra wide and regular camera from before, but also a telephoto camera. And uh, iPhone 12 mini has a Dolby Vision HDR video recording up to 30 FPS. So you get 4K 30 FPS, which we've had since 2016, no big deal. Um, and then there is uh, 4K 60 FPS on the 12 Pro, so it's a nice touch. Um, four times optical zoom instead of the two from earlier. It has a LiDAR scanner for like improved night shots and uh, portrait mode in the night and autofocus. And of course, AR, we all know how much Tim Cook loves talking about AR. Slightly better battery, they say up to two hours more video playback than the iPhone 12. Of course, we have the A14 Bionic Face ID, ceramic shield on the front, mag safe, water resistance. It's all there. Uh, With the 12 mini, you get 64, 128, and 256 GB storage capacities. And with the 12 Pro, you get 128, 256, and 512. The only difference between the 12 and the 12 mini is the battery size and the screen size, screen and the whole mobile size. So between the regular 12 and 12 mini, but um, I think one of the selling points of the 12 is again the size. Do you feel phones are becoming too big now? I mean, I yeah, some phones are a bit too big like, these days. The 12 Pro and 12 are like the same size. They're 6.1 inch screens. But like considering phones are getting bigger nowadays, 6.1 inches is not bad at all. I mean, you have the S20 Ultra and Note 20 Ultra all coming in with their huge displays. And then you have the iPhone 12 Pro Max, 
with uh, the uh, 6.7 inch display and that's a big display yeah i mean considering the phones are becoming like edgeless these days you know without uh, your edges they the screen edgeless for a while i mean uh, yeah but I mean, now now uh, keeping the notch when you because... when you want to hold your phone tight because these days phones are get, getting very slippery as well credit to i you know uh, the iphone 12 designed for being so square so i guess that's a plus point in these phones but i want to talk about why the uh, people will actually uh, like having a smaller phone now yeah because phones keep getting bigger and bigger and sometimes you just like want something that's easy for one handed use and the uh, 5.4 inch 12 mini you know i think so the mini is the in, um, uh, perfect size to do your basic tasks and you don't need any phone bigger maybe the 12 or the 12 pro but i think even the 12 pro max will not uh, be required the screen size you don't i don't think you need that big of a screen size the thing It, is screens are getting bigger and uh, the 12 pro max screen is actually the screen size you would get on an average flagship nowadays so that's not really that much of a big deal i mean it's just an average flagship screen nowadays but it is big it is it is big yeah okay next um regular iphone 12 uh, 6.1 inch and um, yeah um it has of course the same battery as the 12 pro let's dive a bit deeper into the specs of the 12 um it has um uh, 625 nits typical max brightness compared to the 800 of the 12 pro and 1200 nits max hdr brightness so it's good to know um their super retina xdr displays are always good like they always are um, although it is disappointing that we didn't see the promotion 120 hertz displays from the ipads i mean you'd expect a flagship nowadays to have them but i mean 5g 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 and 5G i guess they're making a big battery. deal about 5g actually i feel that because i think 4g itself is a good speed and when we move to 5g i don't think many people will not even notice it i feel that the thing is if you try to actually like use 5g in the flesh you will find that it is actually a lot better than you think it is like you hear that 5g exists and then you just think like oh okay and slightly faster speeds i don't need this but then you use 5g and it's much much faster but the smart data mode you see on uh, the new iPhones it shows you the 5g symbol at the top right corner there it tells you that you're on 5g but don't be fooled because if you aren't doing something intensive like downloading a movie or something if you're just reading an article or something like that it switches back to 4g while showing you the 5g symbol so it's kind of that's not nice like then again i can see why they do it because there is yeah like the 5g the branding is a big a big thing now all that but here's the thing i can see why they do this and i think it's something more companies should actually do but couldn't they at least tell us that it's on smart data mode or it's on lte when we are not using 5g plus 5g in 2020 is still kind of early i mean most places don't even have 5g yeah and so what that do have I don't... regular 5g but not the uh, ultra wide band millimeter wave 5g that's in like just a few places the verizon uh, ultra wide band 5g the 5g uwb thing and uh, it's just not ready yet 5g isn't ready yet okay let's uh, i think let's shift the fo- focus to the mini do you think other yes. companies will try to replicate the um, mini factor of the iphone mini like if it sells well, which do. i think it will they always do 
will companies start making mini version yeah, or you know start a whole new lineup where they make really uh, top notch and uh, 2020 specs phones with which are actually smaller than their flagship models that even a question of course they're going to do it see here's the thing um right now the cheapest offering that uh, they have right now is the 2020 second generation iphone se that starts at 399 dollars and then the iphone 12 mini is 699 of course you have like the other stuff like um the 10r and 11 that they still have as part of their lineup but let's just focus on their recent offerings the se second generation is basically just an a13 bionic in an iphone 8 shell that's all it is it's just an iphone 8 with an a13 bionic don't get me wrong it's good value for money and all that Gr- upgraded cpu upgraded gpu and of course you get the excellent touch id but it's just an iphone 8 it's it's just an iphone 8 and uh, they have like of course sc2 has the bezels from the iphone 8 but of uh, course i think we have to look at the price factor which 399 is actually pretty cheap for an iphone pretty cheap for an iphone but it's like the reasonable price of a mid range phone like nowadays yeah mid rangers if you look at the oneplus nord it's slightly cheaper uh, and uh, you get like similar specs except the a13 is much much better than the than any of the snapdragon mid rangers can do and so things like the 765g and uh, things like that they're getting nowhere close to this monstrosity A13. So yeah, 4.7 uh, compared to 5.4 on the 12 mini. It still has 4G. It has one camera. It has the A13 Bionic, sure. Um, the iPhone 12 mini had an advertised up to 15 hours of video playback. Uh, SE up to 13. It has Touch ID and uh, glass front and back. uh what they call them um, they didn't mention what glass it was they just said the most durable glass in a smartphone that hasn't aged well uh water resistance again uh there is 64 128 and 256 the usual mid range stuff retina hd display it's basically an iphone 8 it's basically an iphone 8 with an upgraded chip Okay, what about the iPhone 12 Pro Max? Uh, except the screen size, you do. You, are there any other advantages, uh, you know, for you to buy an iPhone 12 Pro over the 12 Pro Max? You know, maybe the 12 Pro Max is uh, not I the mean, value for it has money. Five times opti- optical zoom compared to the, the four, four times on the 12 Pro, and uh, it has a much bigger battery. Well, not a much bigger battery. It's like slightly bigger well that's fine and about yeah. three hours yeah but um it's so like the uh, typical specs of the iphone 12 pro it's basically just a big iphone 12 pro so you um, think people will buy the pro more than the pro max i doubt it i think people will buy the pro yes over the pro max because There are pro not a lot of differences, actually. Pro got bigger and it has a decent battery. I don't see why anyone would get a 12 Pro Max unless they want a big phone. Yeah, and, but um, Apple has decided to focus on the smaller but, side, smaller phone. Yeah, this time their I think their main highlight this year is the iPhone 12 Mini. I agree. I think. It's going to be a like last year they go set up new standards or something. Pro, Pro Max, but last year it was like they're getting closer and closer the mid range and Pro models. So people thought you know there'll be a time when there's barely any difference between these models and 
it's here. The star of the show really is the iPhone 12 mini and the iPhone 12. Um, the mini is basically a 12, but with a smaller screen and battery. For it, says, it, says it, it says itself on the iPhone, uh, in the Apple website, the iPhone yeah. 12 and iPhone 12 mini are just versions of iPhone 12. So they're just sizes. Just like they, we have the yeah. storage options. So like iPhone 12, it's just you like you think of iPhone 12, but like when you go on to the Apple website, um, if you head on over to apple.com real quick, you see that um, first, of course, they have the iPhone 12 Pro. It's a leap year. Then they have iPhone 12. And right below that, they have like the iPhone 12 mini, like just there as well. Like with the Pro, also they're advertising the Pro Max, but like you can see they want people to buy the 12 mini. You go over to the page and um, it's, you, you know, uh, hello 5G, blast, 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 sure. Um, they, uh, of course, um, A14 Bionic, the fastest chip and uh, ceramic shield and all that. Um, yeah, they have like a whole banner here just dedicated to the mini. It's like nowadays they're selling you their products, not as products, but as experiences. So you want to buy an iPad, yeah. you know, iPad Pro, iPad Air. You don't think iPad 1, 2, 3, confusing numbers. If you notice, their iPad, like their basic level, most popular iPad is just called iPad. They refer to it at the event uh, from September as just the most popular iPad. They didn't give you a number or anything. They just called it iPad. They've been calling it just iPad for several years. And you know, you Apple's, Apple's iPad, lineup is just easier. Apple's lineup is just easy easier follow. anyway to follow because they don't release more than like four phones a year. And uh, I don't think they don't, they don't even have a problem with uh, you know, keeping the numbers. When you see other companies, they have the uh, mid-range, the flagship, and the cheaper one. So then you have like three different lineups, and uh, that's a bit confusing yeah. when you have but numbers. Like, in but in Apple, Apple's it's, case, it's, it's not like that. Especially when you have uh, when you compare Apple to Samsung, they have M series, A series, J series, S series. Now it's a bit Note confusing, series. and they release like. Just last year, they released over 30 smartphones in one year. And, like, if you look at the variations of their phones, you have, like, um, uh, last year, if you saw everything, they had the Note 9 already in their lineup. Note 10, Note 10 Plus, Note 10 5G, Note 10 Plus 5G, Note 10 Lite, uh, S10 Lite, and... Um, uh, S10 5G and S10 Plus 5G, S10 Plus, they have so much in just their primary lines and then they have all that in their other lines as well, you know, A series, J series, M series, and you can't keep track of it anymore. You just can't. And if you walk into a shop and see the Gal and last year you saw the Galaxy A80 and S10 put next to each other, you'd go for the A80, but you wouldn't really know that the S10 was better until you check the spec sheet. So the more Some, phones you The have, phones we get these days are like so similar. They can't, they can even be a different company and you wouldn't, uh, you know, see the difference by just looking at the back of the phone, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> Also, what do you think about the HomePod Mini? I mean, but why though? I mean, I can see why people want a small, a, spe a small, cheap speaker that can give them better or uh, good audio. And I see the appeal, but here's the thing: HomePod and Siri are already lacking, sort of behind the other speakers, you know. Google Home and all that stuff. 
exactly so like i want to see the price as well i mean the home pod the... mini is for 99 dollars when you uh, go want to buy a alexa you get the alex uh, uh, you know echo dot which is uh, from yeah, amazon that's for 50, 60 dollars so dot. yeah like <laughs> So, echo dot third generation is only for like thirty dollars so like you can get i think a better ai and a better uh um assistant for a cheaper price from other yeah, companies the whole point the whole selling point of home pod is it's apple so you like you have the home pod as a status symbol more than anything anything it's a good speaker and siri has gotten better the uh, um Yeah, there are twenty times more facts and all that stuff. It has gotten mm. better, but it's still not the best. I didn't catch that. Why didn't my echo just wake up? Uh, anyways, um, so look, we got a HomePod yeah, Mini, we got the iPhone twelve Mini. Do you think there's something, uh, you know, going on with Apple with and the Mini products? You know, maybe they are thinking something else over here. Yeah. Well, I mean, they have um, intercom now. They have uh, this, uh, you know, the whole uh, iPhone, iPad integration. What I'm looking forward to now is really an iPad Apple Watch experience. So, like, you can just hook your um, Apple Watch up to your iPad instead of it just being the iPhone. I mean, they're trying to make the ipad like a proper device of its own and not just be a big iphone and they're trying to make the apple watch like a smart the best smart watch in the world period not just the best smart watch if you have an iphone so i can't see why they wouldn't do this an apple watch on ipad experience after all they're trying to promote their services and uh, they have they are trying to promote their products as well i mean apple fitness plus their new subscription service is basically just like it's powered by your apple watch and um it has a certain amount of ipad integration like you can see like the workout coaches and all that on your ipad but then why won't they allow you to use an ipad to pair your watch I think that makes sense. They should probably do that in the future. What do you think? I think, I think, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, having a uh, Apple don't want to have an ecosystem. An ecosystem. They want to have a uh, you know multiple ecosystems. You mean that, right? Yes, yeah, because like earlier. the iphone was the gateway you bought an iphone and then uh, the iphone would get you to subscribe to apple music news fitness get some one drive storage and yeah. i mean icloud storage and uh, it would make you buy an apple watch and an ipad and um, It would make you perhaps uh, keep upgrading the phone your was, iPhone every year. The iPhone you was the. Don't consider Android anymore. iPhone you, was literally an advertising to buy other Apple products. You mean? Yeah, like you buy the iPhone. The iPhone is like Apple's biggest product. If you of course look at their other products like iPad, Mac, Watch, they would be enough to be a. good like thriving business on their own if they were their own companies but they're nothing compared to the iphone like the iphone sells like five times better than any of the others so um, they're actually trying to diversify now they tell people buy the ipad they tell people buy the apple watch this isn't just like an access these aren't just accessories for your iPhones they're stand alone products buy them they want to make it as stand alone products instead of being the part of the iPhone ecosystem yeah so like uh, if apple want, if like um people just uh, have an iPhone and they don't want to upgrade until they really really have to then 
they're not going to make all their money from iPhones. So I think they're trying to branch out here because not ma- not as many people are willing to upgrade their phones and they're not willing to upgrade them as often as before. I think they might just um, like convince you to buy their other products because they know you're going to buy iPhones, but there'll be a point when everyone already has an iPhone. So they need you to buy something else of theirs. And uh, they have decided that this year is when everyone will who buys an iPhone will have an iPhone because they're not including any charger bags or a cable, uh, you know, in the box. But what they did is a bit foolish because they gave you, you know, tight seat lightning cable. So they say you already have the adapter. But here's the thing. The type C brick came only with the iPhone 11 series. So most no. people don't have an 11 series right now. They probably bought like a 10 or a 10 R or they're sticking with one of their old iPhones. Like they won't have the type C power brick. So they're just getting you to spend more money. They want you, know, you to buy Apple, a type C power brick. Apple says that, Apple says that uh, we are trying to uh, reduce the amount reduce of waste we produce. I appreciate but, but that. But then, they they yeah, we, we uh, you know, it's, it is pretty good that they are trying to do that. But now that, again, if people want to buy the iPhone, they have to buy the charger brick as well. And that, again, is going to need packaging. So I don't think it's really useful. So unless you had an iPhone, one of the iPhone 11s, 11, 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max. The cable, uh, you can't use it. Unless you had one of those, you're going to have to go buy a Type-C power brick from Apple. I mean, again, that is going to produce waste. So I don't think Apple have made a sensible yeah. decision here. But or I they mean, just want you to I spend can, money. But I mean, I can see why they're not including the power brick. Like one of the reasons, like the reason they told us about was environmental impact. But there's also MagSafe. And here's the thing. They're introducing MagSafe. They're making it one of the highlight features of the iPhone. I yep. think the, the reason they removed the charger from the box is they want more people to use MagSafe and get used to MagSafe so that in the coming years, they can just remove the charging port entirely and have a portless iPhone, no headphone jack, no charging port that leaves less room for water damage and things like that. And it's just more convenient. Actually, you know, now that you're saying it, this is, a, this is a really possible uh, outcome. And maybe Apple are trying to do that. Maybe uh, when you when you want to use a headphone with an Apple phone, you need those uh, wireless AirPod, AirPods. So I mean, then you will buy you their products. To, I mean, uh, if you have an iPhone, you're most likely not using uh, any um, uh, non-Apple headphones. Like you're either using the Lightning earbuds that they used to bundle in the box. Yep. Or you're using AirPods, which is the more likely situation. If you have an iPhone, you're probably using You know, now that, AirPods. Now that you have said it, uh, because now people will start using MagSafe. Now that people will start using MagSafe and they have gotten used to it, if Apple removes the seaport as well, it is possible that Apple are trying to make us buy the AirPods as well. Yeah, so like, there because earlier, if you wanted to use any other non-wireless wired headphones with your iPhones, then you'd have to buy this lightning. You'd have to buy this lightning to headphone jack 3.5 millimeter adapter. They used to be, I think the lightning now you have to buy them separately. And I think they're just trying to promote AirPods as well because if they do ever go portless, your only choice is going to be AirPods yeah, or wireless. Exactly, headphones. exactly. And let's be honest, the AirPods' is, uh, audio quality is better than most. It is great, but it's not like there. everyone can afford an iPhone, then also buy the AirPods, then the char- uh, in MagSafe chargers. But everything. you see, they want more people to use AirPods because if you aren't aware right now, in um, France, they're selling a special iPhone 11 bundle 
that has airpods in the box so instead of the light that's the lucky box, getting airpods in the box so they want you to use their products exactly i mean that's th- that's the point of the magsafe you no know, magsafe is a big thing for apple now you can see the advertising like, they are giving here yeah but have I you seen how MagSafe ugly no that- have you seen how ugly the transparent case for the apple iphone 12 is yeah um there's the whole uh, circle magnet thing so. I, uh i mean the colored ones the you know there are, there's a lot of choices on the color uh, but here's options the thing. if you want magsafe you're probably going to use one of the uh, silicone colored magsafe cases yeah you just, i don't think no better. one will buy the transparent case it just looks um hideous on the iphone It, it just looks Not so really bad hideous, but it looks i would say hideous I mean, it, it looks well the, uh... the the point of the iphone's design that's the simplicity is just gone when you put the case there's like this the apple symbol is on the phone then you have a big huge circle around it then you have some a line coming downwards i mean the design is ruined I think most people are just going to buy the silicone colored case. Yeah, I mean silicone yeah. But here's the thing, MagSafe like they're introducing this and it's meant to be used with iPhones and all that and it's 15 watts and it's based on Qi wireless charging. So of course there's all the Apple extras like you know the MagSafe wallet and all that but the MagSafe charger alone it's at its core a chi wireless charger so you could take any android phone slap it onto a magsafe charger and it is exactly fine. i mean at the core they are the same wireless charger so i mean i don't if you already have a wireless charging port i don't think many people will buy the magsafe <laughs> and i don't think it's a uh, you know win situation for apple them trying to promote magsafe Well, they're trying to promote MagSafe mainly only because they want you to use more of their products. They want you to buy the MagSafe charger and buy AirPods and get used to it so that they can then remove the port from their iPhone. So by the time you've gotten used to MagSafe and AirPods and the Apple ecosystem, they can happily take off the charging port entirely and you won't notice. because you're using magsafe you're using airpods you don't care about um, adapters and uh, yeah but let's just say this i just I, i i had seen you're an article let's just say this i, I had seen an article about how apple uh, you know this the new iphone the iphone 12 the 12 mini the 12 pro and the 12 pro max are even impressing you know long time android users and maybe even the android users want to switch but now that you want to switch it you want your uh, the android users are going to buy a lot of apple products just because they want to have the real uh, you know the full apple 12 experience you see apple wants apple wants uh, android users to switch that's i think that's one of the main reasons they even introduced widgets because widgets have been on android for a long time but apple has done widgets properly like i mm, uh i had an android phone i had multiple android phones android has been my daily driver for a while and there are widgets there but i mostly never use them just because they're ugly they're not consistent some are small some are big some have these weird bounding boundaries and uh, some take up more space than they need to some have a size limit and they're very fiddly to work with so all i do is I just put a clock widget at the top and then I just lay my apps out in an iOS sort of fashion. And then there's the app library which is basically the app drawer from Android but it's categorized and it looks much neater. So like iOS 14 is basically Android features done better to make Android users switch. So Yeah, I think that's also why they're introducing cheaper phones because one of the main reasons people buy Android phones is they have but and budget Android phones exist like they're 
really good value for money. And I mean, just uh, look at um, uh, back when the Poco F1 came out, everyone was crazy. It had a crazy price tag and, you know, uh, all this. Uh, then there's the Poco X3, uh, the latest one. And uh, the price is ridiculously low, but like they advertise all these iPhone, things, right? iPhone uh, can't afford to be low because they only make like, I guess, four, 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 uh, you know, four phones per year. But consider but to Android phones. Why they're making more phones? Because like they're making the 12 mini now. They're making the iPhone SE. They're exactly. Actually, getting you to buy some of their older, cheaper phones earlier. But here's the thing. Let's say you are an Android user. Renew, renew Let's say you're an Android yes. user. Let's say you're an Android user, and uh, you want you want uh, you know your uh, earbuds, okay? You if you go for the Apple's, uh, you know Apple's uh, AirPods. The AirPods Pro is for two fifty dollars, and uh, Add no, uh, you know, non-pro version is for 160. But then you compass uh, something like that, which is uh, has really great sound quality. Don't get me wrong. But when you compare something like that to Xiaomi's uh, AirPods, those are like for 20 dollars, and the price is a lot different. And Xiaomi is a really good company in making pro- like, uh, electronic they products. They always have catches in their products, like. You uh, look at a Xiaomi phone's price and you're like, oh, this looks amazing. This is so cheap with such nice specs. And it turns out once you boot the OS, they have a ton of bloatware and they have ads. I know, but n- now we are, now we are talking money. about That's the AirPods. Now we are talking about the ear, ear, ear pods. So like, we are talking about the uh, wireless yeah. earbuds. So when it comes to wireless earbuds and you are using an Android phone, let's say uh, Samsung, any Samsung phone, it is better for you to go with a Xiaomi phone, uh, Xiaomi earbud. Like you want to switch to Apple, then you want to see what. Then uh, if you're using Samsung, you're probably like there's a difference. If you're using a Samsung look, here phone, is it. Here you don't it is. Need to buy Galaxy buds. You can buy any. Uh, exactly. When you want to use a. Pods, but like if you're using an iPhone or any Apple product, you want to. You're you're you have to AirPods. buy the AirPods. You are buying AirPods. Look, here's the thing. You are using an Android phone and you want to switch to the uh, Apple uh, 12, uh, iPhone 12, any uh, any model, let's say, but you already have a uh, wireless ear, ear, uh, pair of uh, earbuds. Now, you can't use it on your earphones. Then you again have to buy uh, the AirPod. So it's a waste of money for you. And I don't think then you will be, uh, you will uh, you know switch to the... Uh, if iPhone. you buy, if you get an iPhone, and if you decide to buy AirPods, it's likely you're going to stick with iPhone because AirPods just don't work that well with any other phones. So, if you buy an iPhone, you're buying AirPods, and if you're buying AirPods, you're not switching to Android. But now, if you're going so to like switch from Android to iPhone, I don't think that will be a convenient for a lot of people. Uh, let's say. Let's say in the next model itself, for next year, Apple decides to remove the porch because now they have MagSafe. And uh, you really like the iPhone 13, let's say. And you want to switch, but then you have to buy the uh, wireless charging. You got to buy the AirPods. Now there are so many stuff you need to buy if you're going to switch from Android to Apple. But if you are a long-time Apple user, I don't think that's a big problem for you. That's not a problem because... You have an iPhone 12 Mag MagSafe charger. You use it with 13. You use it with 14. You use exactly. it with 15. But if you're gonna like, switch, it's a, it's a it's a huge uh, disaster. You gotta buy so many products from Apple be- just to complete the ecosystem. Let's see. Let to have the complete experience. See, here's the thing. I have met so many people. Like I've met. Countless people in my life who complain about iOS all the time, complain about iOS and iPhone saying, this is bad, that is bad, I don't like this, I will switch to Android. They say things like, mark my words, I will switch to Android. And when I meet them five years later, they have an iPhone in their hands and they love it. So you can complain about Apple products, but you can never leave the Apple ecosystem. 
you can complain all you want you can rave all you want you can throw tantrums but you can't it's just the it. fact that apple is the best at doing their stuff like um like you can they, complain about it but you can't leave it you know, you can't stop like, loving it but you still complain about it that's the thing about apple products they have that's a reputation they have before that have taken like so long to come before like the ipad just got a proper final floor like last year and uh, at first people will complain at first people will complain saying why has it been this long and they say oh android's done it long ago then they use it and find that it's better than anything android has done in the past like uh take widgets they've been around on android for almost a decade but apple introduced them this year and they look much better than android widgets ever have been so when they introduce a feature in their phones that's been there for a long time like wireless charging widgets things like that they do it in a big way they basically reinvent it like you remember the uh, when apple do something big iPhone. it just sets the standard in the smartphone industry it's just like apple do now that apple iPhone have released launch. the iphone 12 mini it's it's maybe set a standard and maybe other companies let's say uh, oppo or vivo or xiaomi themselves or uh, oneplus are going to start making mini versions yeah because they just want to do what apple's doing because they know what apple's doing works and, yeah exactly uh, you can see that companies do something then apple does it in a big way they reinvent it and then companies act like their previous attempts never existed and simply copy apple so like you can it, look it doesn't at happen really always but iPhone. there is a chance there is a chance that uh, it happens there is the chance let's like just look at the original let's say a company launched. of uh, a very big caliber let's say samsung won't do what apple is doing exactly what apple is doing but they will have some ideas like if you look at the original iphones launch in 2007 by that time there were already smartphones that could browse the web send emails you know there were but blackberry when the iphone came out it was phones. and there were touch screen phones nokias and yeah the thing is they were hard to use and clunky and often expensive when apple did it it was nothing new but it was revolutionary they did what was already there but they but did it they did it in their way they basically reinvented it like by the time they brought their touch smartphone onto the market touch already touch phones already existed touch screen phones existed and smartphones that could browse the web and send emails and do texts existed blackberry and um, something motorola phones and uh, all that stuff and then there were touch phones like the old nokia ones uh, that run Sim- that ran symbian os but when apple did it they had this apple polish to it like they had multi touch that- they had iphone os which was like they called it iphone um, os yeah, i know not they called ios it just, no they called it just a mobile version of mac os 10 and mac os 10 had a pretty good reputation at the time and it carried over even though the iphone was a bit expensive people didn't care just This because j- like apple had, apple have a reputation which just sells everything they create and it's just like they do something they do it big and uh, you know they do it in their way and it's just too good for other companies to handle you see apples like nintendo i believe i talked about this earlier on a previous episode but um mario 3d all stars it was basically a bunch of half hour um shirts on showing out wide screen and they've been oppressed a bit but uh, and they had they developed in it in 6 months and all they did in 6 months was upscale the hard the bit and uh, added a wide screen patch to sunshine that's it but uh people complained about it they said oh this is so lazy oh i'm never going to buy this yet when you look at it it's been dominating sales like crazy 
exactly like apple's phones have never been up to date but they still sell well because of the reputation and their finish the apple finish the the quality and the experience you get from their phones yeah so like there is a certain amount of polish to it and even if they're introducing decade old technology people can complain all they want but they are going to buy it anyway because it's apple exactly next um our last topic for the day um the huawei mate 40 pro huawei is having it tough right now there's the us ban and everything um the main highlight is i don't know if these mate 40 pro phones are going to be on store shelves for long because they reportedly only managed to get 8.8 million uh chips from TSMC 8.8 million Kirin 9000 chips from TSMC before the ban came into effect I mean for a company as big as Huawei I don't think that's a great uh, number of but here's chips. the thing the US ban has severely affected uh, like their business Huawei is a great company and they make some of the best phones exactly. in the world exactly but because of this ban their phones are still good their specs are amazing they feel nice to use but yep. they lack google apps and there's the us ban and there's just this uh, lack of trust for huawei especially after the us banning loads of chinese brands so they're falling and if they don't find an alternative way to manufacture Kirin 9000 they are in a big like trouble it's going to only be on store shelves for about a month and a half or two months at most because that is a very short time considering pro. phones can go around for like a year of production yeah because on the, the shelves as well pro, the mate 30 pro within its first three months sold 12 million units so if huawei wants to sell they're going to have to find something to do quick or they'll be out of stock within like 2 months because Huawei's market share exactly. is huge but it's going to fall if they It's going to fall a lot thing. considering after the US ban and you know uh the fact the Google apps as well Yeah the lack I mean, of you Google could always apps. sideload Google apps but like their chip business is their main issue right now they if they can't phones for people to buy uh, then that means there will be no phones for people to use so why would developers bother developing for huawei when nobody's going to use their apps on huawei why do they need uh-huh. to put in that effort if they know nobody's going to use it why it's almost like samsung's uh, snapdragon and x it's and almost like samsung's today. different chips yeah except like um uh, they run android so you can the developers can yeah that is all right but everyone samsung knows samsung can do what they want samsung phones can do what they want and they have a huge market share but at the, their core they have google apps and they have google exactly well like, they use hms instead of google gms which most apps rely on, rely on. you have uber which uses gms for google maps and you have things like that whatsapp backs up your chats to google it needs gms so huawei is when you have a standard it, just but, follow it i will say except for like a few companies who don't have trouble let's say apple but when you are a company who uses android like huawei you don't want to uh, get in trouble with google yeah because well i was actually and google was keen to work with huawei they actually tried to make solutions but the us government didn't allow them in fact google ge- gave huawei permission to use android they're not doing anything to stop huawei from using android because also partly because they can't stop huawei from using android but another thing is uh people have found ways to sideload google apps on huawei phones and huawei could patch this up whenever they wanted but 
it's been here's the thing like even if you did or three years, if, even if you did want to buy a huawei's phone and you know sideload google apps then again it's extra work for you yeah but, i don't think people will do that but if you uh, but for two or three years this exploit has been around sideloading stuff and sideloading google apps you've been able to do it for more than 10 years now like much more than a decade so i mean huawei can't do stuff to stop it like we've seen in the past we've seen patches from the likes of xiaomi to stop people sideloading google apps onto the chinese i need to mention xiaomi j- just a second the ads in their os is just absolutely oh my god when you open up when you open an app in a xiaomi phone it's just uh, it's just full of apps uh, ads i mean it's full of ads it's like for you other apps install an app, you get an ad and like uh, yeah. you install an app no it's not even ins- app, it's not even app. it's you not even inside the app it's not even inside a third party app it's inside the phone's os like yeah you exactly click- but I can see why they're doing it because I mean yeah it's, it, I mean Xiaomi's cheap. phones are mostly cheap exactly so it's just a bit of extra money coming from the US so I mean not a bit of extra money yeah like, I know a lot of it revenue and that services like me video and all that that is their primary source of profit right now who do you think has the best charger I mean Huawei has a really good 50 watts charger on the Mate 30 mm-hmm. 40 Pro. Yeah, but like, I mean it's um, one of the fastest we have right Mate now. The Mate 40 Pro has a 66 watt charger, but I think like um the best charging technology by far in a phone I think has to uh, go to um well, I don't really know who I should give it to, but some great contenders are like Huawei of course, but then also companies like Oppo and uh, OnePlus. Of course, OnePlus One phones have been really good. Same parent company, so Oppo's a huge competitor. I mean, their SuperBook technology just blows the others out of the dust. But I mean, o- Oppo's main advantage for- when you're going to buy an Oppo phone, it's mostly because of the camera and the battery size and the fast charge. I don't think Oppo phones have anything else better. I think maybe. Wow. Well, uh- Oppo's market share is declining. I mean, like it's not going up anytime soon. It's declining rapidly mainly because it has competition from the likes of Samsung and all that and it's a Chinese company and no, exactly. the world in general seems to be anti-China right now. Exactly. I mean a lot of really good far, uh, smartphone companies are from China and even though that's not a bad thing, it's not a it's not a good thing as well for the produ- uh, consumer i mean then you're not getting a lot of chinese phones like xiaomi are is a chinese company oppo is a chinese company both of them are really ge- great companies but the only problem is that they are chinese see here's the thing um oneplus I, you may not have known this but oneplus is based in china like since they are owned by the same parent company as Oppo they are chinese but when you use their phones you still love them like if you use an Oppo phone a Vivo phone and a OnePlus phone like take phones from Oppo Vivo Realme and OnePlus they're all from the same parent company yeah they are like really similar actually using a OnePlus phone like you 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 don't like feel it is plus phone you know foreign you, you feel it you feel it's uh, like local to you yeah. the others feel like they're all camera centric or they have this really bloated experience that's what i think of first when i use um vivo or oppo phones yes this software is absolutely horrible it's oppo ridiculous. and vivo's phones are mostly based on the camera Yeah like that's basically what they're about the camera but uh, but here's the thing Oppo has some of the best hardware quality control in the world and since OnePlus is able to use that 
they are able to one plus is becoming one of the better companies out of all the companies you mentioned yeah. like now uh, even though oppo is bigger than one plus and one plus gets most of the resources from oppo one plus phones are significantly more popular than oppo so uh, it's just the fact that one plus is uh, you know more appealing to people than oppo for a wider range of people uh, one plus is appealing to a wider range of people considering it's not only camera focused but also hardware plus the software the software oxygen os i mean sure they're deviating from stock a little now but overall oxygen os feels snappy fast and debloated and it's much much better than say something like xiaomi xiaomi os xiaomi os xiaomi os is the Probably the worst right now in the smartphone market, but also probably one of no, the Xiaomi good ones. Xiaomi Except the ads, Xiaomi it is Xiaomi actually is pretty fun. good. Yeah. Me Except Xiaomi the ads fine, factor, but... I think Xiaomi's is one of the best. But if you don't want to be, uh, you know, tortured with ads every time you use your phone, I think don't go for Xiaomi. But here's the thing: at least they have a decent OS, and most of the yeah. ads you can actually disable. If you try to use Color OS or Fun Touch OS from Oppo and Vivo, the the ads are less, but you just don't like using them. With um, Xiaomi Phone, sure there are ads in the notification tray and all that, but those are just small annoyances. The basic you OS is pretty like good. Like using your phone, like uh, you feel. Yeah, I have used a easy to Xiaomi do. Phone. before and except the ads factor it's probably one of the best overs you can buy right now yeah uh, like it's one of you know, the phone. best android skins you can get at the moment yeah uh, and i can like it's just snappy and it does what you want it to do sure the ads may get in the way but in general it does what you want it to do and it has google ads exactly so it has google the more big thing to buy a xiaomi phone than an oppo or vivo phone I think Oppo and Vivo are going to, uh, you know, uh, at some time probably lose this battle of smartphones just yeah. because they're but mostly general, focused on, uh, you know, their cameras. But other phones, other companies are more focused on other stuff as well. Yeah, but here's the thing: since most Chinese brands are becoming more and more out of the question for people who are willing to buy a smartphone. I think if anyone wanted a smartphone, they would just go and buy an iPhone or a Samsung phone right now because exactly Samsung like is really Samsung is the one you want to buy an Android. I was you, you know Android, you can only buy your iPhone, but yeah, like when it, when it comes to Android, I think Samsung is the most balanced Android. company you have in you're terms of hardware, software, iPhone. and uh, camera. The thing is, you are not thinking iPhone or Android. Most people are thinking. iPhone or Samsung, iPhone or Samsung, or something <laughs> like Android. I mean, it's kind of. Or Samsung, but Android is more popular Samsung. only because of the range of uh, the variety you have, considered yeah. to uh, compare it to iOS. Thing, when you use a Samsung phone because of things like One UI and such, it's Android underneath, but you don't think I'm using an Android phone. You exactly, it's like every Samsung, every company UI. has its own Android skin, so. It's different from it's there, company to like company. With most Android skins, is you know you're using Android, but with Samsung, it's like um they haven't over bloated it like most Chinese companies tend to do. Like they like if you look at companies like Oppo or Vivo, they fill your device with apps and they. put lots of um, i mean samsung is also samsung down. is also a bit guilty of this filling the uh, phone with yeah. lots of samsung related apps like you know the bra- samsung browser and uh, the gallery from samsung itself plus the google but photos so you have them, two versions of everything to them, credit to them though they've made an agreement with google that they'll tone down a bit of the samsung apps and replace them with the google counterparts So that's going away, and even then, Samsung's apps, even though they might look like bloatware, they're actually nice to use. Like, uh, I don't when I'm using a Samsung phone, I don't. You don't feel, feel it's bloated, I. Because I 
like the apps that can't spray install with they're useful to me like let's say xiaomi apps i don't think i don't think you need uh, i don't think you need uh, you know apps from xiaomi every time you use your phone but then you can't uninstall it as well so it's just a bit uh, you know useless you you can have three app stores these days you can have the mi store you can have uh, your the me uh, store yeah you could play store the and you can also have something called the get apps get apps so you can have three stores in your single phone in your single mi phone so uh, that's that's bloated that is bloat well yes so like if you buy a me phone a xiaomi phone you have the get apps thing uh, which is their own app store then you have all their me services You there's a lot of me services i have used the xiaomi phone there's a lot of me services and most of them are pretty useless as well i mean yeah most of them are useful like to, me, uh, me music how much more likely are you to you know here's the thing youtube over me music and me video exactly exactly the thing is you have better counterparts from the beginning which most people are using but then why would you go back to your me apps Yeah exactly when you have the google apps but samsung like they samsung actually, is not bloated but they the apps they give are pretty useful it's not like they are completely useless like you have example, me pay um, in which samsung world would you use, in which world would you uh, you know use me pay over let's say paytm or uh, phone pay yeah that is uh, a valid argument because me pay let's face it nobody uses me pay but samsung pay is actually this it's actually like on par with like apple pay uh, and google exactly pay. like Flip the the, uh, the services samsung offers in their phones are pretty good and you know Because it's not like you don't feel it bloated friend. and it's not a lot of apps as well see but here's the thing their hardware is widespread and it has a lot of appeal so more people buy the hardware they're like the number one android manufacturer right now after so they're like number two after huawei or they're like exactly. tied with huawei at the top but since huawei is going down now i can see that samsung, samsung is going to stay at the will top. be growing it's going to go up so there is demand for samsung phones people want samsung phones samsung so is like samsung when you want the top notch android phone you got to go with the samsung phone the uh, so flagship the samsung thing. phone there's a cycle okay um uh, suppose you have an os or you have a phone skin like um an os or a skin of android that you need to optimize your apps for if it's some uh, company that barely has any user base then you're not going to bother because consume here's the cycle consumers buy phones develop uh, due to high demand developers build apps for the phones consumers like the apps so they buy phones and developers develop because people are buying the phones again that's the cycle and samsung has the perfect cycle because they've sold 2 billion smart galaxy phones alone to that's a lot of galaxy phones yeah like the samsung galaxies just the galaxy phones alone they've sold 2 billion of them that's a quarter of the world's population and that's just phones Just I know, phones. like Not just phones. Products, just phones. When you go to the other products, Samsung is probably tearing the charts. And uh, yeah, in fact, they get more revenue than Apple per minute. So Google gets two hundred thousand dollars per minute. Um, Apple gets three hundred dollars of revenue per minute, and Samsung, due to how wide they are, gets four hundred thousand. So like they're clearly a huge company. It's the fact they that don't just this... build phones. they don't just base of people they have um their different branches like um their construction branch built the burj khalifa of um, course they have um, samsung heavy industries ship manufacturing and samsung tech win they have their own basketball team they um, produce military equipment that is that's a lot of samsung art. stuff you can have in South Korea. They are rich but, and they make good use of their money. So, yeah. Like, yeah. The the only the only reason why Samsung is so good is 
just because of the fact that it's appealing to a uh, lot more number of people than let's say oppo or vivo which is only appealing to let's say uh, people who want a good camera phone but now samsung hardware is good camera. the software is brilliant the camera is also pretty good so you have a lot of uh, people under your radar when you uh, See, when the they want to buy oppo and vivo's main highlights even today are like camera and music but you there are much better cameras out there from the likes of apple samsung and google and as for sound i mean you're basically going with apple samsung or google again like they have exactly the that's what sound. when you want a phone i think the main question apple, is samsung apple is or samsung google. no it's like apple I'm, samsung or oneplus yeah or oneplus is a pretty good company these days i mean it's pro- you can get some pretty good phones from oneplus as well and so like oneplus like, is pretty much like growing really good if you're buying a flagship phone today like a top tier flagship phone you're deciding between iphone 12 pro max galaxy note 20 ultra or oneplus 8 pro those are your yeah. three options you don't want to go to anywhere else you you just want to stay there yeah because really. these three companies are the ones which focus on all the you know let's say hardware software and camera the three main things you why would you want to buy a phone like they're a perfect balance of everything good exactly hardware, good software they have good camera good accessories they've built an ecosystem around themselves they're a really like good one go to smartphone brands for everyone they also have phones in different price points you take apple they have you take apple you only have the top mini, top end, but then you have the se as well yeah you have the se you have the 12 mini you you and have all the older Samsung, versions you have the s and note series right at the top and then you have like the a series and m series for the budget and for one plus you have the one plus eight eight pro eight t at the top and if you're looking for a mid range then you have the one plus not people even though uh, you know the budget ones are not the best st- still people still buy it because they are the best in the budget yeah so like if you're buying a phone it's basically just apple samsung or one plus like uh, full stop yeah you period. can it's it's almost this sure like probably next year if one plus comes up with a phone that's app uh, tearing the chart it might uh, you know it uh, really get into the top spots Yeah so like um uh if one when OnePlus releases a new phone there are going to be videos all over the place there are going to be reviews uh, and when Samsung or Apple release one of their flagships it's going to be all over the place but when someone like um uh Xiaomi releases uh, Xiaomi or Huawei releases something even Huawei like there will be many reviews and stuff but they'll always point out the gripes and uh, as for Xiaomi they don't really get much of reviews or attention you know they're the thing is they- that you know Xiaomi's phones are a lot cheaper so you can see the appeal over here like uh, you know making the cheaper phones yeah but, but- bloating the uh, software with ads and everything but you can see the appeal over here you know the cheaper phones uh you can get for a really good uh, yeah, software hardware most people don't really care because how many phones are when you want a flagship phone of course money, you want to go to apple uh, samsung or oneplus yeah so xiaomi phones are meant to be good value for money and don't get me wrong they are good value for money but if you want a mid range phone that's good value for money i samsung i think i think samsung is a pretty good option as well Samsung and yeah. OnePlus when you want it on Android when you want and then uh, there's Samsung's S20 fan edition i'm sure you must have seen that yes of S20 course fan edition it's basically an S20 with all the main features but, but like, the camera so, has been fixed right no not the camera yeah. i mean the battery yeah the bat you have the battery the excellent software the 120 hertz screen the excellent processor Those what do you think about the pixel want. phones the google's pixel phones i mean they uh, haven't been really popular but the camera hardware is pretty good of course well i think google is really suffering with the pixels like earlier the pixels were flagships but now 
Google has just given up. They have the Pixel 4a 5G and that Pixel 5 3A has a, I think Pixel 5 has a some good reviews, but so here's the, the Pixel the 4 3A doesn't. And 4A. The 3a, 4a, 4a, 5G are their main phones right now. They want to focus on the A series because their flagship. But I do series. wish the Pixel grows because I really you? like the design of the uh, Pixel 4. The matte yeah, finish and the orange. It was pretty good. Right? So like, here's the thing. Earlier, they were building flagships, but now they just want mid-range. So you have the... They just want to get started a bit. Engine. They just want to the get some customers, 5. then start the uh, flagships, I think. That's what they're the trying Pixel to do. The 5 is advertised as a, an upper mid-range slash flagship phone, and it has a flagship price, $800. But it's using a mid-range Snapdragon chipset and it has mid-range specs. I think people will buy that. But they're more likely to buy a Pixel 4a or a Pixel 4a 5G than a Pixel 5 just because of how similar the 4a 5G and 5 are. The 5 just has a few minor advantages and the Pixel 4a 5G is much cheaper. So I think that's what Google wants you to buy, the 4a 5G. But... I think Google can improve. They have the room to improve, but they can. They just improve, they just should improve because I really wish right you know, you know, just think about this. Uh, you know, having that mind. having the fourth competitor in the Apple versus Samsung versus the you can say OnePlus these days versus Google. These like the top big, you know, the uh, top four companies you can say not only in smartphones but in other hardware and software but, as well okay, google in software is like mm, uh, tied with apple like number one like more um, most people have an android phone android is like google but the thing is google at hardware isn't really the best i mean if you look at like the top 10 smartphone companies they're nearly at the bottom so if you're considering a no, good but here's the thing: experience. when you go go on this battle that is Apple versus Google versus Samsung, and Samsung. let's just say OnePlus releases a really good phone, and they are on the top as well now. That is, that will be Apple versus Samsung versus Google versus OnePlus. Now these four companies, each one, you know, I think Samsung and Apple are the better ones. Yeah. So, but it would like, be a really good battle to watch. Each one releasing a better phone, one after the one after the one. That will be a really good battle for us yeah, to watch. But and I don't it, think Google can win that battle. Google. Has I don't. Yeah, no I think it will take a couple of years for Google to come into the battle. Then another couple of years, maybe even five, just to win it and uh, you know come out on the top. That will be very tough for Google. Yeah, that that looks like a long road ahead of for Google and it looks like they've just given up on that road because both their latest offerings are mid-range phones and the Pixel 5's processor and specs are worse than the ones of the Pixel 4. No, but here's the, the thing. Pixel here's 5. the thing. Maybe maybe Google is trying to get uh you know more people under its uh under no, the radar. The no wait. I think Google should start I, Google should start with the budget and the mid-range phones and if they are but here's then the they thing. should move here is they should the not thing. Uh, i don't think they I, should be i mean much flagship phones but then they need the customers and the reviews they need, uh you know and a lot of people are doing that yeah but when you look at google their top offerings are mid-rangers as i told you and i don't think they're moving away from that because they don't want to sell you top tier specs and all that stuff. If you notice, the camera on the Pixel 5, the camera sensor, is the exact same one from the Pixel 2 three years ago. But it's better only because of the software. Pixel is not a hardware smartphone company. It's for the I software. Agree. You buy Pixel for... You don't have really good hardware, I think, except the camera, you can say. Maybe the camera, the camera is the same sensor from three years ago. I told you. Even yeah. the camera is only good because of the but, software. But because, took, because say, uh, Pixel is upgrading the software, I think, uh, you know, Google 
the pixel is a bit of a not the best thing they have is the software and uh, yeah, like, maybe so the suppose camera you, suppose you remove their google camera app and you put in uh, the stock aosp bare bones uh, usual camera app that will be tough for the would cameras be much 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 worse but because you're using the google camera app your pictures just look better and you can confirm this because i have side loaded um, the google camera onto um, some of my phones like um, uh, the huawei mate series and the uh, photos on the google camera app turn out much 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 better than the ones taken on uh, the stock camera app so that's proof that the software is the real magic exactly so then pixel is a software company right it's a so the best bet over head. here is samsung when you want a yeah. cheap you uh, when you want a cheap a phone android phone with good value for money you're basically is samsung to... one plus like, we forgot about one plus here yeah one plus yes. you know, one android plus and... Nord and one plus 80 they recently launched the 80, yeah the 80 which is like a toned down one plus eight pro for a cheaper price like some specs have gone up other specs have gone down and i guess for going up you can new flagship phone for a cheaper price than the 8 pro so if you want a top tier flagship you're going 8 pro but if you want a flagship that has good specs great performance and will last as your last you as your daily driver for 2 to 3 years then the 8t is the phone for you then again like in Android, it is Samsung versus OnePlus. We can safely say that. But in the whole yeah. battle, it is Apple versus Android, uh, Samsung versus uh, yeah. OnePlus. Yeah, because I mean, Apple is. Those are the uh, those are the only companies that are pretty good in all the like, three departments. Like here's the thing, Android brands sometimes acknowledge the existence of each other. Android brands, especially, mock Apple. But Apple just pretends other brands don't exist. They're just like, this iPhone is better than the, the last The last iPhone. one. That's they all. don't say, this don't iPhone say... is better than the Samsung one, which Samsung released I mean, yesterday. With the with... exception of some, like, uh, the new iPad, they said, is two times faster than the most popular laptop, five, uh, four times faster than the most popular Android tablet three times then they don't mention the companies Google. they don't mention yeah, the company they, they don't, don't pre the they pretend it, they don't exist and uh, they pretend they, that they're, they're just in their own world companies. they just pretend that like there's nothing else other than apple notice their advertisements they don't say better than the samsung phone better than the oneplus phone they just say better than the other phones they act like they have no idea or what they mostly say is. better than the other phones or they say better than a previous model of I, their phone. Yeah. So they just act like there are two types of phones. iPhones and non-iPhones. And they it's not like iPhone, iPhone and Android. It's iPhone and non-iPhones. Yeah. So like uh, if you notice, um, we uh, other than Android, there's also Huawei's Harmony OS. And that's coming soon. And there's Sky OS for feature phones. And there's... Except, except, except these Android skins. Except these Android skins. Do you think any company will be bold enough to come up with their own uh, OS? Well, I think the only people that that are going to succeed at that are Kai OS and uh, Harmony OS because Huawei has a huge market share. I think Harmony OS will at least be a little bit of a success. But Kai OS has already been a major success because some people, especially in developing countries, are looking for feature phones they don't want smartphones they want phones that can call and text and kai os is just that it has gia it has google apps it has things like whatsapp but it can run on low-end keypad based feature phones which means is there a possibility that we can see harmony os on the you know the third the third os in the battle of android versus yeah ios yeah. harmony yeah, os can think, come in i think it can come in and huawei is trying their best for it to come in they've made the harmony os announcement already and it should be coming to their phones sometime soon right now they're still using android 
But if they can continue manufacturing new phones, then yeah, I think Harmony OS is the way to go. All right, that was a very long episode and yeah, it a was, it less was. Polish, polish than usual, usual. Stuff was all over the place, but I hope you enjoyed nonetheless. And I hope you were patient enough to sit through this and actually like it. It was a really fun episode though. Yeah, it was really fun to produce. I will acknowledge that. But anyways, that's all for this episode. Thank you. And I'll, uh, by the way, about my long hiatus, I was uh, trying to, I was desperately trying to remove a couple of copyrighted music clips from you know, some of my episodes. They were play, playing there. And so I just had to cut them out and verify that they were gone. So after about a month of doing a lot of stuff about that, I'm back here with an extra long episode as a treat for you. It's the length this is, of about This was a episodes. really extra long one. Yeah, like most of my episodes are like 20 to 30 minutes. And this one's like three times the size of my regular episodes. But I hope you enjoyed nonetheless. Um, if you're watching this on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, t- uh, or uh, any other podcast service, then uh, please go subscribe to my YouTube channel, the show notes. And if you're on YouTube, please go uh, follow me over on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, And uh, if you're using Google Podcasts, then, uh, of course, yeah, subscribe to my uh, podcast. And uh, let me know in the comments whether you're on YouTube or on a podcast app, what you thought of this extra long episode. I know, again, it lacked the usual polish, but it was... See you in the next one.